Welcome to the Home Meat Cutting Series. This is the Process Poultry and Small Game video, Process Like a Pro. Whether you're just back from the hunt or on your family farm, you'll find that by using proper techniques, it will assure you a nicer meal on your dinner table and a better mount on your wall. Plus, you'll get the satisfaction of knowing that it was done right. Today, your video meat cutter, Brett Evans, and award-winning taxidermist, Greg Cole, will be taking you through step-by-step -step instructions so here's Brent to get you started. Hi, welcome to the Home Meat Cutting Series. I'm Brent Evans. Today I'd like to show you how to process your poultry and small game like a professional. Let's get started. The ideal degree is about 130. Take the bird, dunk him for approximately 30 seconds. It doesn't take long. An older bird, the water could be as high as 160 degrees, and same with waterfowl. This makes the plucking so much easier, but sometimes it can discolor the skin. Ducks and geese should be about 145 degrees. If you haven't got a thermometer, 130 degrees is approximately a little too hot to touch. What this does is loosens the fat underneath the pheasant or the bird, it makes the feathers come out a little bit easier. That looks like about it. You find it easier sometimes if you hang these birds up. If you find the color of the skin, depends on what you've been feeding the bird. The more corn you feed them, of course the yellower the skin is. When you go to slaughter a bird like this, it's best just to cut their throat. There are other techniques, but I find that's the best. Try to keep the bird from flapping around a lot. It keeps it from bruising itself. Like I mentioned, on an older bird, you might want to raise your degree of water between 160 and 180. You've got to be careful not to, to burn the bird in hot water. It doesn't take long. Approximately 30 seconds should do it. When raising a young bird for butchering, actually about 60 days is about right. You're going to find the pin feathers, which are the immature feathers, or the young black ones that haven't came out. If you take a dull knife, sometimes you can pull them out like that. Sometimes you'll need to take pliers to them. Chickens are inexpensive when you buy them cut up at the store, but sometimes when you're culling out your flock of your old hens, or sometimes raise a few broilers, I think you end up with a more superior piece of meat. You know exactly what's gone into them. Like I say, you might find it easier if you hang these birds by their feet. That way you haven't got to turn them as much. This was a young rooster. They just don't seem to get real fat. He's about six months old. I just found I had a couple more roosters than I needed. I find my hens lay better with one or two roosters, but I usually don't need any more than that. The wings are always tough, especially these main flight feathers. You usually have to get a pair of pliers after them. Usually on a younger game bird, you might not need to scald them. But if you do bring home an old chuck or a pheasant, sometimes a scalding works pretty good. If you've ever plucked a duck, you'll know that they can be really rough. See, these main fight, flight feathers are fairly rough. You might need to use a pair of pliers. Again, it's important to keep your water degree at about 130 on a younger bird. If you've got a lot of birds to do, keep an eye on it. Especially don't let it get too hot. Usually won't hurt the bird, but what it'll do will it'll singe this outer skin here and discolor it, and this doesn't look as nice. Like I say, it is kind of a messy job. It's best on a bird to starve them for 12 hours before you actually do the dressing. That way the crop and the stomach, the intestines are mainly empty. And you just have less chance of rupturing one of those or hitting it with your knife. Kind of hard to tell in this, all these feathers, which ones you've missed and which ones you haven't. It's ideal to wash them as you go sometimes. Again, these tail feathers can be hard. You usually find a gland behind the tail feather or the tail itself. A good idea to cut that out. You can see here to here it is again. I didn't get it all. 
the gland itself. Cut that out. You can see it underneath the skin. Some are worse than others. Especially on an older bird. Let me give him a little bit of a wash in here, see where I'm at. Clean this block off so I don't have to wash him as much. Like I said, the ideal way is to hang them up. That way they're not sitting in the feathers. Now you can see I missed a few here. Again, these pin feathers, or the young and mature feathers, sometimes you take the back of a knife or a dull knife, they'll scrape out. Sometimes you'll need to use pliers on them. There's a fine hair-like feathers on here. You'll see them especially around the wing. If you take a propane torch, a plumber's torch, you can burn them off. Of course, be careful not to burn the skin. And then give them a good washing afterwards and take your knife and scrape as you go. Those will come right off. Go over your bird again, make sure all feathers are off it. Next, show the dressing. First thing you want to do is take off the head. So use a big knife. Try to find a joint. Next we'll take off the feet. You'll see the joint. Cut the skin. You want to keep this cut fairly low so the skin doesn't pull up over the knuckle of the drumstick. You'll see the joint here. Through the joint. See how I left the back? to cover the hawk so that it doesn't pull up over the stick and show the bone. Again, the joint. Cut the inside. Cut the skin all around it. And it should, with a little pressure, open up to show the knuckle itself. There's the tendon. Cut the tendon. Now, you'll want to cut the skin up the neck from the back. Take a knife. It's always easier and actually safer when you use a sharp knife. You don't have to apply the pressure that you do with a dull knife. You want to make sure the skin's cut back to the shoulder. The throat and windpipe needs to be cut away from the neck and the skin itself. Cut down. You'll see the windpipe and the throat. Cut that away from the skin. Next, cut the joint between the shoulder or the back, between the wings and the neck. Again, there's a joint. If you can find that joint, apply a little pressure. Cut the neck away from the windpipe and the throat. As I mentioned earlier, it's good to let your animal and bird go for 12 hours without eating. That way, the crop here, which is where they first hold the feed for grinding, isn't full of feed. Reach down, grab the bag as far back as you can get it. The crop not only holds feed, but also has small gravel in it to help grind the feed, the grain, so it can digest. Next, you want to start at the vent. Cut all the way around the vent. Try not to cut it, which is hard to do. You're kind of working in the dark. Just try to be careful. Give the intestine a pull, and most of it will come out. Keep your area clean. Any fluids or anything that's 
from the intestine that's on your block or on your bird itself should probably be trimmed away just because it's more sanitary. Next, you want to place your fingers inside the cavity of the bird. This is the gizzard and the throat. The liver. This technique's the same for any game bird. It's basically the same on duck, geese, turkeys. On a game bird, you want to watch for BBs and shot. After you remove the intestines, take your bird over to the sink, finish washing him up, remove any feathers you might have missed. He's ready for the freezer. If you like gizzards, which are great in gravy, or even fried, this will be full of feed also. This will last the digestive. Slice it open. This is a bit of a messy job. Open the gizzard up. You'll see the undigested feed. You'll also see there's a thin layer, or actually it's not real thin, it's rather tough layer of skin inside the gizzard. If you'll open that gizzard up, you'll see rock and stuff that they help for the digestive. But this inner liner actually pulls out. You have to remove that inner liner. It's probably best to empty it. Again, keep your area clean. Apply a little pressure to turn that gizzard inside out. Pull that clean. Trim the top. Wash your gizzard up. Today I'd like to show you how to save money cutting your own poultry. First, when you purchase a, a chicken, make sure it's a quality brand chicken and always check the dates. When you get the bird home, if you have any doubts, don't cook it. Let's start by removing the neck and gizzard. Turn the chicken over. Start with the wing. You can see the little indent is. If you wiggle the wing, you can see where it connects to the back. Make a cut down and show you the knuckle of the wing. Cut through the knuckle, leaving the meat on the breast. There's your indent, one cut. Pull it back. Turn the chicken on its back. Cut through the excess skin. And open it up so you can see the back. See where the thigh and the back is connected. Start at the back towards the tail. Cut along the backbone until you hit the thigh bone. Grab hold pull it out and again you'll see where the knuckle has been disconnected. If you cut through there and push against the back and pull on the leg, you'll pull the oyster a piece of meat away from the back. Say, so open that up so you can see what's going on in there. There's the knuckle. Cut down through the knuckle pushing, pull. You can see how you clean that piece of meat. Comes right away from the backbone. On the breast, cut through that skin. You can see the backbone. Right through here is the wishbone. You want to cut between the wishbone and the backbone. Right through the ribs. You might want to crack the back so it fit into a pot for soup. On the breast, place your knife in the center of the breast, push and pull. From your legs and your thigh, you can see where they're connected. Again, between a joint and a ball joint. Uh, if you're going to bone it, a lot of times it's, it's, it has a keel bone on it. You give it a little crack like that, that'll just pull right away. Makes it easier for barbecuing or for cooking. On the wings, if you're looking for wingettes or drumettes, you have three joints. The tip, the wingette itself, and the drumette. Again, if you wiggle that back and forth, you can see where it's connected. You want to cut right through that joint.
There's your wingette. Say these tips, the drumette make excellent soup. Again, see where the joint is? Just that easy. The back and the wings make good soup. There you have a cut up chicken. We're ready for frying. If your recipe calls for a boneless chicken, here's a way to save big. Turn the breast, skin down. Again, with just the end of your knife, and pointing towards the bone. Follow that bone around. You have the wishbone here. See, all you need to use is the very tip of your knife. Follow those bones down. If you need it skinless, that's simple enough too. Now there's a low calorie meal. Here's another cut that's becoming popular. Boneless thighs. It's actually pretty easy. Again, using just the tip of your knife. Start at the knuckle. Run your knife the length of the thigh. The other side, length of the thigh. Keep your knife angled towards the bone. Now if your recipe asks for skinless thighs, that's simple enough also. Comes right off. Again, like I say, you just use the tip of your knife. Just that easy. You're set for stir fry. Okay. If you need a skinless chicken, it's all pretty simple. Pull the skin up, take your knife, cut down the middle of it, the rest just pulls out. There you have it. A little tip on how to really lock in the juices on your poultry. Take black pepper, really rub that into the skin. This works on any kind of poultry, game, turkey, chickens. If you get that pepper good and rubbed in, take cooking oil, and coat it. What that'll do is really lock in those juices for when you bake this. Or it's good when you barbecue them. Well, the cutting's done. Next thing to do is wrapping. When using freezer bags, it's important to get all the air out to save you from getting freezer burn. Make sure you get that thing good and tight.
So no air can get in there. If you freeze your fresh fryers, best way to thaw them out, put them in the sink, let a trickle of cold water run over them. They'll thaw out in a little over an hour. Sometimes it's best to get the bird on the ground and cut its throat. This way you don't have them flopping around as much. Keep them in the water. Place a barrel or something underneath him. Start plucking away. Just get both hands in there and just... Best to pull up on the feather, that way you won't rip the skin. Try to pull each feather out. Any of the fine feathers will singe later with a torch. It only takes five or ten seconds in hot water. Hot, hotter your water, the less it takes. Should be about 130 degrees. Of course, these white birds, they clean up so much nicer. Most of your commercial birds are all white. Tail feathers can be a little tough. Around the hawk, they're always a little tough to get out. Wings can be tough, just like the tail feathers. You have to pull them out one at a time. Stretch the wing out. It's best to move as quick as you can. They get harder as the bird cools down. Well, we've got the most of the feathers out. Next, you want to go through and pick out any that you've missed. Any real tough ones. You might want to use a pair of pliers. On these wings, they're going to take a good hard yank. Next, we'll take the legs off. Move this leg back and forth. You can see where the joint is. Cut that tendon. There's the tendon. I'm going to take all that outer skin off with the leg. Take the head off. Apply some pressure on the knife. Now take the intestines out. Fold these wings under so you'll set up a little straighter. Cut around the vent. Try not to cut the intestine. Next cut, make it right across below the breastbone. Take your knife. Pull that loose. Make sure your slice is large enough to get up in there. Reach back past the heart. You'll feel the throat. Take your knife, cut the throat. Lift everything out. This is the spleen, you want to cut away from that so that doesn't happen. Take your liver and your heart. This is the gizzard. Cut it away from the intestine. To clean the gizzard, take your knife, split it. The gizzard holds gravel, which helps digest the bird food. Inside the gizzard, there's an inner lining between the meat and what holds the gravel and feed. If you pull that out, you have to wash it off later. You want to skin the neck out. This is the throat and the windpipe. You'll cut that off. Should pull out. There's another bag in here that holds feed. To take the neck off, take it back where it's connected to the back. I've got this bird turned around. Usually I would have it towards me. This way the camera can pick it all up. 
to be able to feel where the joint is, it connects it to the backbone, to the neck. Take a cut with your knife. Hunt for that joint. Don't want to leave any windpipe or intestine there. I want to clean up some of the fat. Next, you want to take him over to the sink, wash out his cavity, cut away any blood or anything in there you want to get wash out. I'd like to show you how to cut up a turkey. They cut up exactly the same way that a chicken does. So it might give you a better idea of where all the joints come apart at. Start by taking out the giblets and the neck. Again, you want to start with the wings. This way the weight of the bird is held so you can get to these wings and pull up on them. Again, cut through the seam to open that up so you can get a better look. There's the knuckle you're looking for. Cut all the way down to bone. Then pushing on the bird's body, and pulling on the leg, give it a pull. They're a little tougher than chickens, but then they're a little bigger. On the drums and thigh, same way like I say with the chicken, pull the leg out away from the body, cut through the skin so you can see down in there. Pull back a little bit. You can see here where the thigh seam runs along with the backbone. Start back by the tail so not to leave any meat on the back. Cut to the joint. Get a good hold of that leg and push down on that back and pull. You'll see all this meat that would have been left on the back. Cut through the skin, pull it open so you can see down in there. There's the seam we're looking for. Start at the back. When your knife stops, that's where the thigh bone is connected to the joint. Give it a pop. Cut down, grab hold of that leg, push down in the back, and give it a pull. That's your oyster. Now the breast is a little harder to cut than on a chicken because the bones are a tad bigger. Open it up along the rib all the way to the backbone to where the oyster came out. It's harder to find the wishbone on these, but like I say it runs parallel with the back. Make your first cut and find it. You have to use a little more force because like I say the bones are thicker but they'll come apart. You're actually cutting through the ribs where they connect to the back. Take that cut, take a look around. There's the wishbone. Again, cut across that tendon there. Give her a bend. She'll come right apart so she'll fit into a pot for soup. A couple different things you can do with the breast. If you're going to cook it whole, you're going to have to break these ribs so it'll fit into a pan. Put a little weight on it so that it'll sit flat so you can baste it. You can see how much meat you'll save by pulling that oyster. If you don't pull that oyster off, you lose a big chunk of meat that stays on the back. To separate the drumstick from the thigh, it's the same way you do with a chicken. 
you can see the line of fat that separates the two joints. You can also see by wiggling about where that's connected at. First you want to start with a paw. Find the first joint. Take your knife, give it a cut, Pull it backwards till it pops. Cut the hide away till you can see that joint. Cut through the joint. The next one, same way, find where he moves, take your knife, push down, break the joint, same on the hind leg. First joint up, find where it wiggles, cut through it, find the joint, cut the hide, Break the joint, take your knife, go through where the joint's been broke. Next, start with a head. This is a New Zealand rabbit here, We've one we raised, a butcher. Cut the skin around the neck. Get your knife underneath the hide. So you've cut the hide all the way around the neck. Next you want to take the hide, gently pull it down towards the hind. Take your knife, where it's hard to pull, you want to cut that velvet in between the skin, the hide itself. The older the rabbit, the harder the hide is to come off. You have a real thin skin, so you have to be careful until you have the elbow. If the hide gets a little tough, just cut that membrane. Careful not to cut into the meat. The foot or the leg should pull out. Cut that memory so I get my finger in there. The hair on the hide wants to come out pretty easy. Taking it off like this. On a field dress rabbit, on hunting, you'll want to try to get all the buckshot out, trim away any big blood spots. Again, pull that down to the elbow, cut any hideaway that's hanging up on there. Again, grab hold of the elbow. Pull the hide off. And this one, some of the hair was left on. You want to trim that away, of course. Next, you want to start pulling the hide down towards the hind quarter. Any felt that's hanging you up. You want to be careful around the belly. Try not to rip it. Try to keep the intestines in the rabbit, which sometimes isn't as easy as it sounds. This is the felt I'm talking of. It's a fine membrane in between the hide and the skin itself. If the hide gets too tight, it starts to wrinkle on you. Sometimes you can give her a cut, it'll open up better. You try to keep the hair off the meat as much as possible. Of course, on rabbits, it's fairly hard. They have such a fine hair. On a field rabbit, it's best to hunt them after the first freeze. They seem to have less parasites. Grab hold of the head. Give it a gentle pull. Again, you don't want to rip the belly, if at all possible. 
With all game, it's best to get them cooled down as soon as possible after the kill. We're down to the hindquarter now. You'll see the tail here, not a male rabbit or a buck. You'll have to watch the penis. Again, like on the front shoulder, get your finger in between the hide and the bottom of the, the knee. And here left, cut it away by the felt. If that felt won't cut it, pull away, you can always take your knife and cut it. What's left here is the tail is inside the hide and the testicle cut through there. There's the tail. You can see you took it off inside out as to not get hair or as little hair as we can on the rabbit himself. Also, if you'd like to keep your hide, you could take a board and stretch that out like that and salt him. A couple days it'd be dry enough to use. Next, we want to just take the head off. Whenever going through these bones, it's sometimes nice to use a heavier knife. Try to find a joint below the skull somewhere. Look your rabbit over. It's best if any hair is left on him. We'll take him to the sink and wash it off. But some of it you might have to trim off. Next, we take the guts out. Start between the legs where the belly is. Put your knife underneath there and pull up as not to cut the gut itself. Once you've made your first incision, you can usually pull that stomach up away from the intestines all the way to the brisket, which is where the rib, ribs are joined together. Open it up. Again, lift him up. Stick your knife through. On each side of the brisket, there's a joint where they join. It's where you want to cut. Next, you want to open up the chest cavity, being careful again not to hit any gut. In the upper chest is the lung and the heart. Then you have your diaphragm, which separates the intestines from the hind heart. Cut the diaphragm on both sides along the rib. You'll see the throat, which runs up the back of the lung the windpipe, cut around the back, along the back bone, both sides, give a slight pull, pull down towards the diaphragm, along the back bone, your intestines will be connected, cut that away, your kidneys and your liver, give a slight pull as not to break the intestines. Between the legs is the H bone or hip bone. You'll want to cut that to get the intestines out. Again, there's cartilage on each side. Which usually you can break with a knife. Open that up so you see the large intestine. Take a knife, cut all the way around it, both sides, around the back. Gently pull it, cut it, and there's your animal's dressed. The heart is on the lung, the liver 
It's just above the stomach. There's a bag on the liver which needs to be cut away. Do not cut into the bag. It holds waste. Cut enough liver, leave enough liver on there as not to rupture the bag. Next you want to take your rabbit over to the sink, wash him off, get all the hair off him, cold water, and any hair that won't come on with water, you want to trim. Again, that fine membrane will come off. Make sure you get all the intestines out. He's ready to be washed up and cut up. Now we've got our rabbit dressed. I'll show you how to cut him up. You want to start right behind where the ribs end. Take a large knife, place your hand in the tip, push down in the back, through the backbone. Separate the loin from the hindquarters, same way, right in front of the leg. Place your hand on the tip of the knife. This technique works for squirrel or any small game. On a four-quarter, it can be a little tough. You want to go on either side of the backbone. Same on the hind quarter, either side of the backbone. And there you have it. We're ready for frying. I hope I showed you something you can use. Thanks and see you next time. Hi, my name is Greg Cole. I'm from Reno, Nevada. I'm an award-winning taxidermist, been practicing taxidermy for over 20 years. Today, I'm gonna to give you the most important tips and how to care for your trophy in the field that will result in the best possible mount to put on your wall. Okay, this is a chucker partridge from Nevada. Probably one of the most sought after game birds in Nevada. I'm gonna show you a few tips on how to take care of this in the field so you can get it to your taxidermist in good shape. The first thing you do is when you get one on the ground, you want to inspect it a little bit. Look at your primaries here, your secondaries here. Make sure there hasn't been a lot of shot that's passed through there. This one's broken a little bit. It's not bad. This bird would be a fine specimen for an open wing mount. Uh, you want to just check it out. Look at its tail. Make sure it's got all your tail feathers on there. Make sure they're not shot or broken. Check for Young birds will have pen feathers in here. This one's fine. This one was shot in the middle of January. Our season goes until the 31st of January. And usually from January on, the birds are in really good shape. So you want to make sure that the bird's a fairly mature bird. It'll make a better mount. Um, by wiping the blood off, and then you go ahead and free, freeze them, they want to have a tendency to kind of stay that way. Like when you wake up in the morning, your hair's sticking straight up, you know. Um, so you're better off to try to keep the bird as dry as possible. Just clean the blood spots. This one apparently has no blood. This blood right here is, is irrelevant. I mean, it's not that bad at all. If you have one that's bleeding a lot and you have a lot of blood, try to wipe it off as much as possible. But if the bird is damaged to the point where it's just bleeding continuously, probably not a good specimen. Blood on these feathers, they, they, they stain them. They're not good for the feathers, but um, you can always get them clean with either a solvent or just cold water and, and a detergent. You usually get the blood off all of them. Um, also, when you decide you want to have one mounted, you don't want to ever, ever gut it. You want to leave it in the hole. You want to give it to your tax numbers in the hole. You cannot have a bird mounted and eat it. You, got, you either have to make up your mind. You want to eat, eat it or you want to have it mounted. Um, you can eat one that's a little more shot up that's not as prime specimen. Uh, and also, like a large waterfowl, when you get a large waterfowl down, sometimes you shoot them, they're kind of broken up because you're shooting that heavy shot. Uh, if the wings, like I said, are broken, the legs are broken, uh, the, the taxidermist, a good taxidermist, should be able to take care of it. There shouldn't be any problem with that at all. Um, as far as um, 
the blood, the amount of blood on it, uh, waterfowl feathers are pretty much water resistant, so the blood won't saturate it too bad either. You know, they'll just beat off it like the water does. So if you get a bloody bird, as long as he's in good condition as far as the waterfowl is concerned, you should be fine. And like I said, take it to your taxidermist, and they'll usually give you the right advice, whether it's a mature bird, have it mounted, or it's a young bird, first year bird, where you have a lot of discoloration, you don't have the right color. This bird happens to be a probably a two or three year old bird. Um, he's got all his color, he's in fine shape, you know. Um, this one here has a broken leg. Broken legs can be fixed. Broken wings can be fixed by the taxidermist. Uh, once in a while you'll get a sh BB shot through the beak. That can be repaired if it's not damaged too much. Okay, the first thing I would do is I would take a cotton ball, put it into the throat cavity, keep any blood from draining out. Every now and then you'll get blood coming out of the nostrils. You can just wipe it clean, which would be fine. And then, like if it was a broken wing, let's say, I would take a little gauze pad, or you can even use cotton, wherever the spot was, I would push it in there, just to absorb some of the blood. Because the less you have to wash these birds, the better off you'll be, and you'll have a lot better mount. And just get it kind of nice and tucked in. And then we'll take a nylon stocking, just a woman's nylon stocking, gather it up to where we got the toe here, slip the head in. I usually slip the head in first. A lot of people will take it and stick it underneath the wing, but if you do that, Sometimes you'll have these feathers bend on you a little bit and they'll break. You're better off just to stick it in like this. Make sure the nylon stretches out pretty good. There you go. You want to be careful not to stretch the nylon out too far because it'll have a tendency to spring back and it'll rough your feathers up a little bit. Then what you can do is if you're hunting in, say, December or January, there's really no hurry to get it back to your truck. So this way, you can either tie it in a knot, put it in your game bag, and you can hunt the rest of the day until you maybe lucky enough to get a limit. Um, this process will work fine with any bird. Um, like when you get into the larger birds, like geese and stuff like that, it might get a little tough to find a nylon for it. But any upland game bird will be fine, ducks, you know, quail, so on and so forth, they'll be excellent. But if you happen to get a couple pheasants or so, make sure if you're going to tie the end of it, don't tie your tail into it, because then you'll have a kink in your tail and they're kind of a kind of a pain to get out. But this way is probably one of the the best way to get it to your tax dermis. Then once you get it from your your field into your freezer, what I would do is Get a heavy-duty plastic bag, uh, anything you can buy at the store, trash bag or anything. I use these meat bags. Slip it in there. I try to get as much air out as I can. Just fold it up real nice. Be careful here where your tail and your feet are. You don't crunch it. Just fold it over real nice. Try to get as much air out as possible. Just tape it closed. Go ahead and just put it into your freezer and get it to your tax as soon as possible. It'll stay good like this for probably, oh, eight to nine months. Uh, there's another way you can seal these things. Also, I use in the studio are these seal meals. These are probably the finest way to keep these birds preserved because this takes draws all the moisture out of them and they are good for one or two years. A lot of tax members will use this technique. It's probably the best way to do it. I hope these tips I have shown you will help you put a nicer trophy on your wall. I'm Greg Cole. Until next time, good luck hunting.
Thank you for watching. We trust that you found this video both informative and interesting. Other titles include everything you'll need to learn to process your meat, poultry, and fish. Process like a pro. Right in front of the legs.